Christy has given me permission to say <laughs> welcome, everybody, to What the Flick. I, I don't uh, want to usurp you again. That is Christy, that is Alonzo, <laughs> I am Matt, and that is Ben. Uh, we are talking about Early Man, um, of which I am not, I was late today, but... Uh, you're a late you man. Describe? You're the sequel, late man. man. Yeah, sure. So uh, <laughs> this is a, a movie uh, directed by Nick Park, who's also in it, written not by Nick Park, right? No, he did not write it. Yeah. I don't know. We'll uh, look it up. We'll look it up. Uh, so, um, <laughs> and by uh, in it. And this is a stop motion a uh, animated uh, film about uh, the sort of origins. Well, the initially, it, it starts in the Stone Age. Uh, and it's a suggestion that the Stone Age took place in uh, near Manchester <laughs> during lunch. <laughs> I do wonder a little bit, would we have a different reaction if we had grown up watching, like, if this was a movie about American football or baseball with this same level of joke, would we like it better? I don't know. I think, I think, I think we're, I think we're, we, we yeah. get it. I like, you know, you, we, yeah, there might be some Man United references that go over Americans' heads, but I think there's a, we have a baseline knowledge of how soccer works. I, I just think, I'm a huge fan of Ardman. Mm -hmm. I love their stuff. I even like, you know, flushed away and Arthur Christmas and ones that weren't necessarily hits over here. Uh, oh, you know, the Christmas is terrific. Yeah, the right. Shaun the Sheep movie. I think oh, everything yeah. they've Shaun done. Shaun the Sheep is amazing. Everything they've done is great. <laughs> and this movie just lies there. It's not funny. I found it kind of visually unappealing. Like the pig noses on all the on all the cavemen was just kind of not fun this to look is, at. This is Ardman's Cars 2. Yes. Aww. It is. It, it just, uh, yeah, it, like, it's not unlikable. It's not but Cars like, 3, like, though. It's not Cars 3. Uh, no, it's it, not it that is, bad. It is, a, it is the worst thing they've ever done. I'll put it Aww. that way. No, it is. is. It is the, because everything else they've done is great. Right. So, I mean, that's, the worst Iron right. Man movie is still like pretty consistently uh, amusing. Okay. Not yeah. as right. inspired. It is, it is better than any movie with Ice Age in the title. Yeah. All right. I mean, I, I'm not going to go right. it's overboard cute. here. But it still has a lot of the wordplay and a lot of the visual gags and a lot of the cheeky self-referential right. sense of humor. The duck thing was the, funny. Yeah, there, I thought some, that was funny. There's a lot like consistently I didn't know why cute that was stuff. Funny. Why was that funny? Because they say duck and then a giant duck shows up. They, they, they oh, think I it's literally, a little, I literally, they think it's a like duck. literally Earth's most basic <laughs> joke. No, I literally but also <laughs> I no, that joke. No, the, yeah. the gag about the size of the duck I thought was funny. Right. I they thought that was a funny duck. I, 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 I just kept wondering. I was like, duck. I literally thought like three times ago, why is the duck so? Or how do you explain the duck? Moving my score up a little bit just to piss off Christy because she cut me off on the other review. Five point five. I cut you off. Well, you took my opening spot. I totally did not even hear you were going to do that. I'm so sorry. I gave it a. We're all around the same thing, except Alonzo. I don't know what Matt just said. It's children. 5.5. I gave it 5.9. You know, yes, are there jump scares, but it's also more like, yeah, you are terrified for these characters, and I think this was a really fun, exciting movie. And is it derivative? Absolutely. Totally. Yeah, it's, 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 written okay. by, it's written by the guys who wrote Deadpool, who clearly know genre, and they know what they're doing for this kind of thing. I'm surprised y'all are both talking about the sound design, because there's a lot of it where I think it worked, but there's a part in the middle the, the, the Soyuz sequence, mm -hmm. where I think it just all gets really loud and the score gets really overbearing and it's just like, calm down movie, like in, it's just too much. In that last shot, the score is very overbearing, but that feels yeah, I that irrelevant. There, there, I, for me, I that, like, that, 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 that middle chunk really kind of bugged me. But like uh, the squishiness of, of the creature. Like, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's, that's what I'm talking that's about, a, is that noise. Oh, no, 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 just, no that's great. Like fava beans and a nice key. But that's like, like the noise it makes, especially as it evolves. Yeah, because it's like this sort of like, flower squid lizard, you know, and it kind of flows. Up. I mean, and, it, and, and it's interesting because it, it, it's designed yeah, like somebody to tell us what Pokemon it is. <laughs> there it's you go. It it's because like it's, 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 like, it's designed no, like, it's designed. No, it's not Jigglypuff. No. <laughs> Even I know that. It's designed like something that would swim. Um, anyway, so um, I had a blast. Oh, I want to mention really fast, um, besides Ryan Reynolds and Jake Dillenhall, Rebecca Ferguson is the She's other great. Brit. Um, Ariane Bakari is the other British scientist. Um, Hiroyuki Sanada, who was in The Train something or other. What's the movie with Colin Firth? Hold on. Training Day. No. Hold Not on. Not the girl on the train. Oh, no. He's a Mr. Train Holmes. To Busan. No. The Railway Man. The great train robber. The Railway Man. He's the Japanese dude who is like Colin Firth's anyway. Station whatever. agent. He's I really good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Olga. Dehovichnaya is the Russian. <laughs> They're all doing it in space. The human centipede. <laughs> Bodily fluids are floating. We're, we're six, <laughs> all six of them. Anyway, it's a really good cast. Human centipede in, in space. space. <laughs> <laughs> the fun.
final chapter. <laughs> anyway, it was really good. I give it a 7.8. <laughs> what are your numbers, friends? Uh, seven. Oh, yeah. We had so much fun on this movie. I gotta say, we had so much fun. I mean, we're, we're, we're all really great friends, IRL. It was nice to hang out with Alonzo and his husband and Matt, and we just sit in the back and we giggle. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> we need the support that only we can give each other in moments we like were that. Cackling really loud at moments that were supposed to have been kind of serious. That was yeah, This is a movie that kind of went from like the occasional giggle to like at least one face palm to just flat out guffaws by the end. This movie is <laughs> so ridiculous. They don't ever really get a nail for these characters. Like Asa Butterfield, we're told several times, was raised by scientists and he's supposed to be super smart, but then. They make him ridiculously naive at just the most plot convenient moments. Uh, you know, like this is a guy who grew up on Mars, but he grew up watching movies. So the first time he sees a horse, he should What's not that? completely freak out What's about that? it. What's that? Right, he freaks out. There's it's that. it's worth noting, this movie is from the writer of Collateral, Collateral Beauty. Beauty. I was going to say, if this conversation rings a bell, because we're just like gobsmacked <laughs> incredulity at how ridiculous it is, it's because it comes from the, the mind of Alan Lowe. Yes, our new favorite <laughs> terrible screenwriter, who going? goes big, I'll say that. He doesn't <laughs> write like tiny indie movies with three characters. He, he writes idiocy on a galactic scale. <laughs> Interplanetary. Oh yeah, yeah. There's then, an exploding barn in this. Yes. <laughs> That's the best part of the whole movie. And then, you know, and Britt, and Britt Robertson's character, it's like, we're supposed to believe that she's this this tough cookie, like, yeah, I've been in foster homes yeah. and I don't trust anybody and I'm gonna <laughs> break out of here when I, when I turn 18. It's like, you're Britt Robertson. I mean, like, you, there's a lot you can do as a screen actress, but I, I, you don't give tough cookie for a second. Yeah, you she's know? kind of annoyingly feisty and perky, which is the, the hole they keep putting her in. She's also 26 years old. Girl, you're adorable. You're so cute. But you, she's too old to be playing a high school girl at this point. Well, this and a dog's purpose back to back, it's right. a little much. I mean, look, I, I, I mean, she pulls it off. There's these really awkward, jarring kind of tonal shifts. So there's a character who gets some really terrible news at one moment, and the next moment, it's like blue skies and this Woo! joyous hot air balloon festival out of nowhere. And the, the music is all either like the score is just pumping up the strings yeah. like crazy to make you feel things, or it's like a million different pop songs that all do that whoa <laughs> thing. <laughs> Um, I, I wrote about this for RogerEbert.com. I described it as the Muppet Baby's version of Starman. Because, <laughs> because, because he's magical and he comes down to Earth to uh, go on a road trip Dang. to the West Coast. Um, so um, this is pretty spectacularly terrible mm, and no not way. even fun and doesn't even look great. The effects are totally cheesy. And the worst part of all, the worst part of all is it is this shameless vehicle for Will Smith to pimp out his son, who looks like a young version of him. So actually, this is a narcissistic opportunity for Will Smith to go back and revisit his youth and save not just Earth, but all planets. Well, so it's narcissism <laughs> and nepotism, you're saying. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so for, before we get into the Will Smith stuff, uh, what's Latin for making up for a positive hangover review? <laughs> um, um. I'm not a crazy person. If you will recall, a mutual friend of ours stood up at the theater last night and said, Christy, I agree with you. Yes, that's true. I'm not a crazy person. And I have I, taste. I like movie 43. I <laughs> am in no position to question anyone. Anyway. Thank you, thank you. I like Hangover 2. Uh, <laughs> so, there you yeah. Go. yeah, this was... Also, there's this weird kind of intermittent South African accent yeah. that Jaden Smith is doing. And he does a lot of the voiceover at the beginning. He explains what has happened to Earth and where they are now. And that I don't opening wonder... narration is some of the worst it's terrible. narration I mean, I've ever writing, heard outside yeah. of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah, the writing of, is bad. Oh, man. The accent is, is all over the place, but also like there's a weird thing with the sound mixing where I couldn't always understand what he was saying. I don't know whether he I was know, muffling I, his I lines. I don't know what? any of their names. Like K I could Kata or Kata is it Kata or Kata? I just is it spelled with a Q? And and and, and like <laughs> the the, the dad's name? name's like Cipher or something. Cipher right? Rage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the last name Rage. Okay. Uh, with an I know. I. With, with an I, I, I G. Right. Yeah. Well, you don't you don't know that at the time. <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they all had this weird accent. Like they decided the future talk was going to be this sort of vaguely South African, vaguely Kentucky, but with a little Harvard <laughs> thrown they in. They don't all have the. Uh, like, I mean, accents would go away. I mean, you wouldn't retain any accent yeah. from your world in a future world. That's not how accents work. Andor. Now here's a question: Say you have a a, uh, a, a homing beacon that that uh, that <laughs> can't get through the totally. atmosphere, and you have to climb up something tall totally. to signal the homing beacon. And it goes into it goes millions of miles into yes. space. Now you have a choice between <laughs> a regular mountain and a live volcano. Right. 
Which one do you climb? Right, yeah. He's the closest one to him, I guess, right? Uh, he climbs the now. Act <laughs> volcano. Well, there's another mountain like right next to it. What the hell? Also, how about this just in general? Again, the thing goes into space, like a million miles into space. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 yeah, I got it. There it is. Okay. Hey, yeah. really fast. She's like a sexy mummy. Oh, God. <laughs> she's hot mummy. If she's you have a hot, fetish. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's right. a, she's, she's a, a milf. She's the milf. Exactly. <laughs> she's a mummy. I'd like to. F <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh God! This movie is so misguided. Right. So anyways. the riffs okay. on this movie are going to be better than almost anything in the movie. Yeah. For, just for starters, I can't think of a movie, maybe ever, at least not in the last twenty years, that has completely had no idea what to do with Tom Cruise. And yet, he, as I was saying to Matt walking out, it's like a quintessential Tom Cruise movie in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, yes. Right? There's a lot of running, and there's and a lot of near death. Um, no, but prior to that, he's like he's every Tom Cruise character. He's like, a scam. He's arrogant. <laughs> And he was only looking out for himself. Right, right. And then through the love of a beautiful woman, he learns that there is a greater good out there no, for so which it's he a must. Tyler fight. Perry. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, there's there, every Tom Cruise movie ever. There right? is a Tom Cruise arc, but there are so many shots of him doing this. Well, he's possessed. Just That's no, no, why. before he's possessed, oh. even though he just is confused <laughs> and he's just standing there slack jawed. It's like, that's not really the Tom Cruise wheelhouse. Tom Cruise is active and like, you know, getting stuff done, whether it's good or bad. And here he just spends a lot of the movie going, yeah. And it's, it's weird. He's a pawn. And he, and he yeah. does all this weird stuff that, that, you know, gets everyone else in trouble. I mean, really, there's, there's a subtext to this movie that's like, Man, hot women will get you in trouble. I'm, <laughs> or they you could know. be your salvation, depending on which hot woman you're talking well, about. Well, right, but you know. <laughs> can, can we talk about Annabelle Wallace as She's so pretty. the blonde Egyptologist? She's so pretty, and I love the fact that after the big <laughs> plane crash, this is not a spoiler, this is like the most famous set piece if you've Read which, anything about this? Which was badass. Clear, like that's an awesome scene. The plane crash right? is badass, plane crash is and good. it's also quintessential Tom Cruise. And in, in that, it's so clear he's doing his own stuff. Of course, because he's. He's, he's clear because he's clear. <laughs> um, but he, he, you know, that's like the best part of the whole movie. But then, like afterward, she just looks perfect. He yeah. looks perfect because he's possessed by the mummy spirit. Right. But she's like flawless. Listen, like if that's ways. a curse coming back, looking like Tom Cruise, <laughs> like sign 50, me up. I'll put it out there. I cried in the Lego Movie. Yeah. yeah I don't. will admit that I cried. You don't cry. Ever. I don't cry ever. Yeah. I got choked up, and a lot of that is being a parent, and a lot of it is, uh, you know. I kind of want to say it, but the yeah. thing you have a problem with, but you cannot talk about. Yes, there's a, there, there's a big turn sorry, in this movie. You had a problem with you, parentless fuck. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You hate right. children. Don't well, you, you know, you yes, but that's another story entirely. You don't have nieces and nephews I, or anything. Uh, no, not a one. Yeah, I don't come from a Catholic giant brood. Um, <laughs> this movie takes a big daring turn in Act Three. Uh, it didn't work for me. That was the thing. It, it, I mean, I, I'm not saying don't go see the movie. I, I had a, I had a, no, I'm not. <laughs> I had enough good. I had a good enough time, and there's enough. You're right. There are enough jokes the in show here. Would be so much better if you actually shoved it. There are enough jokes that are entertaining and that work that people should see it. But just be gird yourself for this thing that's going to happen that might might or might not work for Great you. Great voice cast. Yeah, but he's, Chris Pratt's going to have a long and successful and tens of million dollar career. Yeah, he's hugely likable. Yeah. 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 But uh, like I, I, I like, I like fat years. Chris Pratt better than buff Chris Pratt, but you know, whatever, no one cares what I think. Um, yeah. That's <laughs> because you don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's, that's what it all boils. All right, about. so Christy, tell them your number. Da, 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 10, I'm wow. going big, you gotta first do it. First 10 of the year, yeah. Matt. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm giving it a 10. Da, wow. da, da, da. Two tens. And I'm giving it a seven, which somehow makes me the jank here. So <laughs> I'm dragging us down to a nine. Oh my God. It's at nine.